taken this whole day to start to come to terms with the scope of the destruction from Hurricane Michael, and there'll be more dark days to come for so many people who've lost everything. Americans who are suffering tonight, who are missing their loved ones, who are not sure the fate of their loved ones. And up to this point on the program, we've focused on them. That's where the attention we think should be. It was yesterday, it was today, and people will be in need for a long time to come. While hundreds of thousands of Americans are, are suffering right now tonight, the President of the United States decided earlier today to take time to yuck it up with Count Kanye West, one of his celebrity fans. Now, we'll get to the surreal substance, if we can even call it that, of what happened in the Oval Office in a moment. But first, a reminder that at least six people have died as a result of Hurricane Michael, including a child in Georgia. Other children who rode out the storm were afraid they would die as well. Seen as Diane Gallagher spoke with a 12-year-old boy in Panama City this afternoon. We just saw, like, three trees landing on all three of our neighbors' yards and everything. And, it's, and that really got me scared and everything. I mean, Chris, you're only 12 years old. I, I could ask, were you afraid that you were going to die? Uh, yes. Because I, because I have, like, um, a life that I could live or, or my future. And my dream job, I want to be a construction builder. Well, that was just after 1 o'clock this afternoon. At nearly the precise time, the president was riffing with Kanye West. In fact, we're going to show you exactly what was going on in the White House in the Oval Office. It'll be on one half of your screen. It starts with Kanye West talking about his Make America Great Again hat. On the other half will be what cameras had captured on the devastation up to that point. This hat, it gives me, it gives me power in a way. You know, my dad and my mom separated, so I didn't have a lot of male energy in my home. And also, uh, I'm married to a family that, um, you know, <laughs> not a lot of male energy going on. It's beautiful, though. But there's times where, you know, it's something about... You know, I love Hillary, I love everyone, right? But the campaign, I'm with her, just didn't make me feel as a guy that didn't get to see my dad all the time, like a guy that could play catch with his son. It was something about when I put this hat on, it made me feel like Superman. So I had the balls, because I have enough balls to put on this hat. I, I mean, this Adidas thing made me a billionaire. I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder I was connected with a neuropsychologist that works with the athletes in the NBA and the NFL. And he, he looked at my brain. It's equal on three parts. I'm going to go ahead and drop some bombs for you. 98 percentile IQ test. I had a 75 percentile of all human beings, but it was counting eight numbers backwards off there as a piece. So I'm going to work on that one. The other one's 98 percent Tesla Freud. We can empower the pharmaceuticals and, and make more money. That's one thing. I've never stepped into a situation where I didn't make people more money. This right here is the iPlane 1. It's a hydrogen-powered uh, airplane, and this is what our president should be flying in. What I need Saturday Night Live to improve on or what I need the liberals to improve on is if he don't look good, we don't look good. This is our president. He has to be the freshest, the flyest, the flyest planes. Our best export is entertainment and ideas. But when we make everything in China and not in America, then we're cheating on our country. And we're putting people in positions to have to do illegal things to end up in the cheapest factory ever, the, uh, the prison system. That was in the Oval Office of the White House. Kanye West talked a lot of about a lot of things, in addition to what you heard, he talked about stop and frisk, tax breaks, attention deficit disorder, the 13th Amendment, crime in Chicago, art programs. It went on and on. Now, this isn't about the worthiness of those topics. This isn't even really about Kanye West. This is about the president sitting there, listening, nodding, laughing, calling Kanye West a smart cookie, saying Kanye West can speak for him any time, putting on this show less than 24 hours after the worst hurricane to ever hit the Florida panhandle made landfall. Now, why did the president spend this time today of all days with Kanye West? Because Kanye West is a fan of his. Now, the president may lack empathy for many, many Americans, but he always has time for his fans. Anyone who says something nice about him or screams lock her up for him. Just last night, he was at one of his rallies in Pennsylvania on the same day of the worst hurricane to make landfall in the continental United States in more than 25 years. Earlier in the day, the president was asked if he thought it was appropriate to go on a campaign trip given the gravity of the storm. 
Well, I hear they have thousands of people lined up, and so we are in a little bit of a quagmire. Uh, I don't want to disappoint people. Uh, they've gotten there. Some people were staying. They got there last night. I believe it starts at about 7 o'clock uh, going to Pennsylvania. So uh, we'll probably go, because what are you going to do? Tell thousands of people that have been waiting there all night that we're not coming. They've been waiting there all night. So had the hundreds of thousands of people in Florida, and at that point, Georgia, who had lost power. They, too, spent a long night waiting. They'll spend a long night tonight waiting and probably for many nights to come. Now, maybe you think it's no big deal for the president to go to a campaign rally on the same day of a natural disaster. Fine. And, and maybe you think there's no hypocrisy that Mr. Trump tweeted this two weeks after Hurricane Sandy. Quote, yesterday, Obama campaigned with Jay-Z and Springsteen while Hurricane Sandy victims across New York and New Jersey are still decimated by Sandy. Wrong. That happens all the time. There is, and it's been said many times, a tweet from Donald Trump for everything. For this, this president, what used to be wrong, is now right simply because it's him doing it. Do as he says, not as he does. What you're seeing isn't happening. And he always seems to be able to find a crowd of people to go along with it and cheer him on, and he poured in a storm. It's a widely held belief that President George W. Bush never recovered from his response to Hurricane Katrina. He flew over the scenes of damage in Air Force One initially, too little, too late, too far removed. This president's track record in hurricane response so far includes throwing paper towels at Puerto Ricans, denying that thousands of Puerto Ricans, Americans, died in the aftermath of Maria, died from lack of power and access to medicine and doctors, died earlier and in greater numbers than they ordinarily would have. The president doesn't recognize those deaths, those human beings, as victims of the storm. So last night, he was at a campaign rally as other Americans sat in the dark without power, were mourning, were mourning the loss of their loved ones, their homes, the loss of the lives that they once knew. In the light of today, we started to see how bad it was. We heard that 12-year-old boy talk about how he was afraid he was going to die. The president watches a lot of television, but the president didn't hear that boy's voice. He certainly didn't hear it live because around that time, he was listening to a big-name celebrity in the Oval Office. The president was busy basking in the warm glow he no doubt feels when the cameras are rolling, when he is center stage, and a famous person is praising him to his face.